Hi, I'm Theo Stocker for Yachting Monthly and I am at the Dusseldorf Boat Show in Germany. Um, now I'm on a little bit of a trail to find interesting, new, smaller boats. Behind me are two boats made by Pointer, which is a Dutch yard, the Pointer 25 and the Pointer 22. They've both been around for a little while. What hasn't been around for a little while is their brand new world premiere of the Pointer 30, which is just here. Behind me is the brand new Pointer 30, and this is the first time it's been on show anywhere. This is hull number one. Let's have a little look and we'll see what makes her special. Now it's really exciting to see um, some new 30 footers being built. So we'll start at the bow and here we've got uh, a bowsprit, uh, a plumb bow and an anchor roller integral into the bowsprit. So that's absolutely de rigueur at the moment, everybody's doing it. But you've got a relatively flat uh, rocker of a boat but with a good rounded forefoot. Let's just have a look in here. So you can see there's actually a, a V underneath the hull which promises to be a little bit more seaworthy. So this boat is good to sail, enjoyable to sail, reasonably quick, but she isn't designed to be a sports boat. She's designed to be a bit more comfortable in a seaway, a little bit more seaworthy. So here's the keel. This is the 1 meter 25 version, which is standard. There is an option for the 1 meter 75 deep draft version for a little bit more performance, a bit more stiffness but I think uh, on a boat this size, it's quite nice to have a relatively shallow draft. The keel is cast iron uh, and it weighs just under one ton, ton which is 40% of the boat's entire displacement. So that promises to be pretty uh, stiff boat um, with a 40% ballast ratio. Right, then on to the motor. Here we've got a pod drive for the uh, electric inboard. Uh, well, it's not an inboard, it's a, it's a pod drive. There's nothing inside apart from batteries. And most people are opting for that, albeit lots of these boats are going to Holland where the inland waterways um, prefer electric over diesel. There is the option of fitting a diesel with a sail drive there if you want it. And then coming aft, we've got twin rudders here. Uh, relatively shallow, uh, but uh, pushed fairly well outboard so that you get lots of grip when the boat's healing anyway. No massively hard hull chines, anything too aggressive. Um, there's a slight chine here, just as you come towards the stern, maximize um, form stability. But otherwise she's relatively conservative, but uh, light displacement cruising yacht of 30 feet. Let's go on board and see what she's like. So you can see we come up to the bathing platform and that's got a little ladder stowed in the end here and that's standard on all of these boats and then we come up to the cockpit so one thing about a small boat is you have to be a little bit more creative with how you use the space um, the pointer 30 is available with tiller steering which is quite a nice option but on this boat they've gone for wheel steering and rather than having twin wheels or a really large wheel they've got this jeffer steering system which allows you to steer from either side so here's the wheel steering. So if you want to steer on port side, you have it over this way, a little pedal unlocks it. You can lock it centrally and carry on steering or you move it over to starboard side. There you go. And then you can sit down here and have a really good view out. Or you can sit on the side and look forwards like that. So you've got a really nice helming position. They've got a cutout on either side to make space for the wheel and your legs. Um, we've got a uh, furling line here. I've got head sail sheets here. That's actually for the code zero. The um, jib comes down to the foredeck, so you'd need to do that from the coach roof. And the main sheet is just here, which you can do by hand. Uh, that's tied up, but you can do that sitting on the side as well. And I guess you can sit here, leg either side of the wheel. After the wheel, if you take the cushion off you can see there's a groove here that you can rest your feet in so if the boat's healing and you're up on the side tuck your feet up and this is really secure and that feels like a really fun position to helm from 
If you're tiller steering, you're going to be a little bit further forward in the boat, but there's a similar groove here to rest your feet on if you're sitting up on the combing further forward. Just having a look at the helm station then, you can see the rudder heads um, on either side here. There's your control system for the torpedo motor with an emergency stop button. And Rain Marine instruments, Hark and deck gear, so it's all nicely fitted out. And then just aft on the quarter here, you've got an adjustable backstay. Can't do the maths for the purchase there, but it's a reasonable purchase. Below the helm seat, you've got a little uh, locker here, which will be perfect for fenders, maybe a little dinghy. Although with the steering gear there, you just need to make sure that it's not rubbing on that. The same on the other side. There, you've got a, a bilge pump which you access from on deck and a bit more stowage space as well. In here, you've got a little gas locker. This boat isn't actually fitted with a gas cooker, but there is the option to have one. Further forward, so you've got the main sheet coming down to this little um, position here in the middle of the cockpit. There's no traveller, but on a boat this size, you basically just use the van or the kicker. There aren't any other cockpit lockers because there's accommodation beneath both of these, um, just uh, quarter berths, and if you want to use those as stowage, you just access those from inside the cabin. The forward end of the cockpit, we've got these really nice cushions. You'd probably take those off if you're sailing. You've got instruments and lines led off from the mast onto the coach roof where we've got uh, Harkin 35 winches, so they're quite well specced up. Uh, you've got your bank of clutches, you've got your headsail sheet, which sheets to a position here on the coach roof, so you get a fairly close-winded sheeting angle, which is nice. And then from here I can reach the boom. This is probably about 1 meter 70 off the deck, so you would need to watch your head a little bit um, if you're a taller crew. Um, and then here we've got the chart plotted to port, Sure, my kids will be pressing the buttons all over that, but uh, it's a good place, it's really visible for everyone in the cockpit. And then a nice little touch, you've got these rope bins that are actually an external unit, so that drains straight down onto the side deck, but it gives somewhere to keep the cockpit completely free of lines, which I really like. Right, heading forwards, we've got the mast rigged on this boat, which is nice because then we can see how the shrouds go. Um, they both come to the chain plates on the gunnels here, uh, so that's a good wide angle. You do have to duck a little bit under the lower shrouds as I come round. And then you're up onto the foredeck. Up at the bow then, it's all pretty neat. So you see we've got this integral bow sprit, um, after which is the forestay furler with below decks furling, which keeps it really nice and neat. And then this has got a code zero rigged at the end of the bow sprit with a furling line that comes all the way aft. And then the bow roller is integral in the bow sprit, and that leads straight into the bow anchor locker here. Let's have a look. So you've got an electric windlass to starboard, and it's a pretty shallow drop straight onto a flat slope. Goes a long way forwards though, so there's space for plenty of chain. You've got a, um, I think it's a, a six mil stainless steel chain here, might be eight mil, um, and you've got plenty of that. You might just need to watch for chain piling up here a little bit. And there to port is the furling line, which comes up onto deck here and goes aft then for furling from the cockpit. Uh, on this, we've got an s -Tech synthetic teak deck, which is recessed into the mould, which feels really nice. And then you've got loads of ventilation here. So you've got uh, flush hatches for the forward berth, the heads here on the port side, uh, and this is just above the galley on the starboard side. Moving aft then, the the mast is deck stepped, um, which makes it quite easy for stepping and unstepping with a crane um, with all the lines led aft. You can see from, squeeze around the shrouds. And you can see from up here that they've really emphasized space on deck. And with that bathing platform down, it really is a huge space uh, to have a look into. Uh, so you can probably stretch out and sleep on these uh, settees if you want to do, if it's nice weather or if you put a tent over it. Um, or you can just sit here, sunbathe, and enjoy yourself. Equally, if you want to do a little bit of racing, I guess you could with a crew, not that this boat, this boat isn't designed for racing, 
but she will go fairly quickly and it will be an enjoyable boat to sail. Right, let's have a look down below. Right, going forward in the accommodation, you've got the galley to starboard here. Um, this boat's been fitted out just with a really simple little sink and uh, gas cooker. So that, there is a gas cooker, sorry. So that's got the gas hobs there and the sink. Now that is a little bit optional. Um, you could uh, put in a gimbaled uh, spirit stove there if you wanted to, a little Origo stove. You could potentially put um, induction cooking in if you were on shore power regularly. Um, uh, or they could actually fit a galley further aft if you wanted to put a, a more serious oven in. But for this kind of boat, it's really just a, a weekender and occasional longer holiday, so I think you'd be okay with hob cooking. Here you've got a drawer fridge, which comes out reasonable amounts of stowage, at least for wine and all of the important things, but that'll keep your milk and butter fresh. Uh, and then forwards of that, you've got the stowage up on the, um, uh, in these pouches which run along a wire which go the whole length of the boat which is quite a nice little detail. You can have whatever pouches you want to put on there, clip on other storage stuff so it's a really flexible option. And in here, this isn't quite finished because this is hull number one, uh, it's a prototype, but that's going to be a, a little pop-up bin um, underneath a built-in chopping board which is really nice. And then under the galley you've got some stowage and this is where you'll keep your pots and pans and plates here and they use these sort of felt baskets around the place, obviously some syrup waffles, uh, but that's really good stowage in there, so you could arrange that stowage however you want, reasonably flexibly. Forward of the galley, we've got um, a V berth, it's a fairly narrow V berth if I'm honest. Um, I haven't measured it, but it looks about uh, 1 meter 20 wide, reasonably long, but you might clash with your feet at the other end, and you can see you've actually got a sort of a uh, a m internal moulding here which takes up some of the space um, and then the moulding forward for the uh, anchor locker and again you've got these pouches along the side and there is stowage under the berth here in one of those pouches and there is more on the other side there under the panels that you can lift up but for a couple you'll sleep in there reasonably comfortably as long as you don't mind being fairly cosy. Right, uh, and then just after that, it's nice you've got a little separate heads compartment. So the door for the heads closes in the forward cabin, or you can close in the heads with it. And it's just a sea toilet, it's a proper sea toilet um, in there. It doesn't have a shower or a sink. The philosophy being that actually you're about half a meter away from the sink in the galley, so you'd wash your hands there instead. It does have an opening hatch at the top and a light, so fairly simple. The door doesn't close, the seal off completely. You can see you've got gaps top and bottom. So it's more of a sort of a toilet stall, but it does give you some privacy. At the aft end of the boat, you've got um, a quarter berth on either side. These are reasonably wide berths and look really long, um, and they've got bins outboard there for stowage. Uh, so that's enough space to shove lots of clobber in. Um, and there is a little bit of stowage underneath them as well, I think I'm right in saying. And then under the berths, you've got stowage here as well. There's a battery in there. And then loads of stowage under the starboard berth. So it's not bad stowage. It's definitely more of a weekender rather than the long distance cruiser. Um, but for that, that's, it's not bad. Engine access is under the companionway here. And almost all of the boats they're selling at the moment are fully electric. So you can see in there, let's have a look, you've got electrical control systems, lithium batteries, and a tiny little bolt and wire going through the hull for the pod drive. But you can see there's a moulding ready fitted there, so you'd probably fit something like a 10, 15 horsepower in there with a sail drive if you wanted to. On the starboard side, you've also got... Um, another quarter berth and that's got the table in there and that's a, a movable table that you can have either in the cockpit um, up on deck or you can have down below in the saloon. Electronics as always on these little boats are pretty simple so you've got your VHF up to port and there's a chart plotter just behind that moulding then you've got your instruments on starboard and a few of your switches here and that's about it there's some uh, sockets around the boat 
uh, but uh, pretty simple. The real heart of this boat, um, the builders say they've actually built this boat around having a coffee. Very continental indeed. And they've actually got two armchairs on swivel bases. How civilised is that? And here you've got your Nespresso machine, which you can run off battery uh, or an inverter. And then your little espressos there. And you can heat up some milk if you want a latte or whatever. Uh, but very civilised indeed. And when you sit in those chairs, your eye level is looking out of the windows. Forward of that, and these chairs swivel 360 degrees, so you can sit and face each other, have a little game of dominoes or whatever you want to play. And forward here, there's also a little workstation, which is big enough to use as a chart table. It folds up like that. You've got power sockets under there, so you can plug your laptop in. And you've got a bit of space to store some charts there as well. So for a small boat, that's a really nice little solution. I like that. They're going to make a couple of changes to make a bit more knee space under here so you can sit really comfortably for longer periods. But uh, if I was working from home, I feel like that would be quite a nice place to do it. I guess one of the downsides of this boat is she's quite shallow um, and the coach roof isn't too high, which really limits headroom. I think you're at about 1 meter 40, 1 meter, no, probably 1 meter 50 in here. I'm 185 and I'm stooping over. When I'm sitting down, I've got loads of headroom and I can see out nicely. Um, but this isn't a boat that you can stand upright and walk around in. Um, but if it's a weekender, short week cruises, um, or you just don't mind smaller boats, this puts her on a par with quite a lot of other boats in this bracket. I'm thinking Benta, Swallow Yachts, they're all this kind of proposition, um, and I really like it. Uh, construction, she is GRP uh, hand laid up um, and pretty solidly built with the keel bolted on under here and a compression post for the mast. Uh, it's an interior moulding throughout, so the whole thing is moulded. It means you can't chop and change it around very much, but it does give you really clean lines, a neat finish that will be durable for a long time to come. So that's the point of 30. Um, I hope you've enjoyed having a look around. Um, I think she's a really fun little boat and I'd quite like to see some of them coming to the UK. Um, but you can always pop over to Holland and have a go on one.